up and get us started. So um, with that, Tessa, if you'll start recording. Good morning and welcome to the 14th in our Shift, Sustain, Succeed series. We welcome anyone to join us each Tuesday and Thursday as we do our best to answer the questions that are most pressing for our businesses in navigating the COVID-19 situation. We have spent the last few weeks shifting and navigating through changes like never before. We may not be done, but I think it's time to head towards the sustain phase. For me, this means that we have to focus on what has been and continues to be most important for our businesses and for our organizations. It is our mission, the reason we do what we do, and how we preserve this and communicate it to our customers, our employees, and to our community. This is different than marketing and advertising. This is how we craft our message that reflects our character and our image. At least it should. So today we're gonna to be talking with Jill Harry, District Press Officer for PennDOT District 1. Jill has worked with, in the media. She's worked um, as an active volunteer in the community and she understands messaging from many perspectives. I'll remind everyone that we're in an ever-changing situation where we think we are by fact today may be replaced with new information tomorrow. Everything shared today is based on the best information that we have today. So welcome, Jill. It's good to see you this morning. Thank uh, you. Let's start with, um, can you explain to us a little bit about why PR is different than marketing? There, okay, let me get started. <laughs> First of all, I, my, most of my experience is in PR from one angle or the other. So I don't have a lot of experience with marketing because marketing is like the intentional side of PR. So PR is everything you do. It is your reputation. It is every time you encounter anyone, you're working a little bit on your PR where marketing is more of that advertising purchased kind of um, side of things. So it is more of the hard stuff and PR is more of the soft, constant stuff. Great. Well, let's start with the perfect world. So in preparing a baseline for an organization or business messaging, where would you start? What is the first thing that we should be thinking about when we just, you know, are thinking about what, what should our messaging, what is our PR basis like? The most important thing with PR is to actually know what your core mission or your core message is. So if uh, public relations is your reputation, what do you want your reputation to be? If you don't know what you want your reputation to be, then you're going to really struggle with having a consistent level of PR because you're going to be all over the place. So you need to sit down and you need to figure out what is my core message? What is, what is the way I would want someone to sum up my organization, my agency, my business? So you need to figure out what that is, and then you need to make sure that it's correct. So then you, so you figure it out, you think about it for a little while, you share it with people you trust, you ask them their opinion, especially if you're in a, maybe a smaller kind of a situation where you have to make a lot of these decisions alone. You know, talk to other people, make sure that what you're trying to say makes sense, and then build from there. So then you want to make sure that people know what your core message is because everything you do should reflect that. So if we do that right, we think about it, we've got it in place, we're ready to take that, that same message kind of across different media, you know, whether it's newspaper, radio, whatever, um, that's, that's the perfect world. But now let's talk about reality. So much of what's been needed to be communicated in the last few months from our businesses and organizations has, has had urgency. You know, they really haven't prepared that base message and now they've had to tell people you know, whether it's on their website or through emails or through signage, that something's changed or that, that something's happening. Do you have any tips for how, um, how to do better messaging when you're really kind of on short notice, acting on the fly? Mm -hmm. I would say even if you are in that kind of situation, you still need to take that time to develop your core message. So you don't have to react to almost everything in the moment. Sometimes it's better to take at least a little time to stop and think, what do I, how do I want to react? How do I want to say this? Because again, everything you do is going to build towards your reputation. So if you message your um, things grumpy versus happy, that's always the impression that people are going to get. So even if you are in that kind of uh, crisis management, you need to step back and think, what is my core message here? So for PennDOT, and this is an example, in these times when 
we had to close the offices very suddenly. One day we were open and the next day we were closed. And our core message was safety. That's because that's always our core message. So at PennDOT we have a core message of safety and efficiency and responsibility to the taxpayer. So whenever we um, are out there talking, we're always hitting on those points because that is who we are and that's what we want people to know about us. I'm sure that a lot of you who are listening right now, maybe when you hear the term PennDOT, you think of something else initially than safety or efficiency or being responsible, but that is our core message. So when we found ourselves in this crisis, like everybody else, like we had to shift, how are we going to do things and what are we going to say? Everything for us was about safety, safety of our employees, safety of the driving community, and uh, safety of our contractors and consultants. So, you know, we shut things down and we said it's because of safety, because that's true and that's our core message. Uh, when we started to open things back up, the message, main, we maintained that message. So we opened things back up as we found them to, the procedures were safe enough to do so. We had to do that with the rest stops. So there was people who were upset. We closed the rest stops and they wanted to be able to use them, especially for uh, the trucking industry. But we needed to make sure that we could keep them safely cleaned because we didn't want to be the ones spreading the virus through the use of our facilities. So once we could figure out that, then we reopened them in a way that was safe and then, and so on and so forth. So I think it's important for an agency, an organization, or a business, you really need to know what your core message is. And even if it's just a temporary message, like how do I want to project the image of my business in this moment? So what do I want people to think? Like that I handled it well, that I was upset about it, that I was concerned about other people's safety. I think there's a lot of businesses out there that are doing a really good job of projecting that. We care about our employees, we care about our customers, and that's why we were making these changes. And I think that's you know, very reflective of what PennDOT is trying to do too, and we all have that kind of community-mindedness. Jill, that's, that's great advice. Uh, you A couple nuggets in there for me, for sure, because my staff would, would tell you, I'm reactive. Like I, Like when I get a thought and I think I need other people to know, I think I have to tell them like in the next hour. And, and I often need to slow down and say, you know what, the, the, a good message tomorrow will be better than a bad message that's yes. delivered fast today. And just really take the time, you know, they will sometimes remind me, hey, can you show us the message first so we can proofread it and <laughs> make sure there's no misspellings and such. So the, the, the time advice is, is great. Um, also, I'm curious, I, I don't want to put you on the spot about this, but you're, the core messages of PennDOT, are those, are those the values of PennDOT or those kind of separate? Because I think about, for me, I don't know that we've developed our core messages, but we certainly have our values. And those would very likely translate to our core messages. Yes. I think there's a there would be a lot of overlap. Okay. I think your core message is how you um, convey your values to others. And that you do have to think about how you say it, because there's little words that can totally change the tone of something. So when you say that something is important versus something is um, let me think about that again. When you say something is reopened versus saying something is finally reopened. So you put in that one little word and it changes the tone of your message. So you went from being maybe excited about being open to sounding more like you're grumpy or upset. Yeah. So I think that um, you just have to look at your, if you have a vision or a mission statement or something like that, and how does that translate into your core message? It can be almost identical depending on how your mission statement is stated. But for us, we have talking points that we develop for our high level projects, just to make sure everybody understands what our core message is for that project so people can say, the same messaging. So that's a very important part of PR because it is every little um, interaction you have, regardless of whether it's your employees, your customers, or other stakeholders like your suppliers. Every time you interact with somebody, you are engaging in PR. And, I spe yep. and especially in this world of um, social media and instantaneous posting of interactions, you really have to think about that because you you're having a bad day and you kind of, you know, you're short with somebody and they misinterpret that as you were being rude. And then, you know, an hour later you realize that somebody's posted something, you know, on Facebook and now you have this little 
PR nightmare maybe stewing yeah. in the background there. So PR is your reputation. So it's everything you do. So you really need to know what that core message is. So when we go out to do projects, we have those talking points and that really guides us. And there's a lot of repetition in them because our core message doesn't change. It just adapts to the situation as far as, you know, the details for this yeah. project versus that project. Great advice. And I know you have this happen all the time, but I only once in my life did I have a reporter really aggressively chase me for weeks until he could get me to make comments and um, being prepared with my messaging ahead <laughs> saved me. And, you know, because he was very, very good at trying to, you know, get me to say different things and sticking with that core message. So great, great advice. Well, we think of advertising as a really big budget item. And I, I know that a lot of particularly small businesses and organizations struggle with, you know, well, I, I don't have the money to get word out or to do it right. But PR, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, you know, from a financial perspective, can you talk about how, you know, those of us in, with small businesses or organizations and little to no budget might be able to leverage PR opportunities? Yeah, I... First, like I said at the beginning of the conversation, I actually don't work very much in marketing and advertising. Almost all of the PR that I do is that low to zero budget style of PR because it's all of the interactions that you have. So if you are in a situation where you can't spend a lot of money on PR, but you understand the importance of you know cultivating a good reputation so that people understand what you do and why you do it, um, then you realize that everything you do is PR. And so you can build towards this whole rounded approach. I would say you need to make sure that you're very aware of where your expertise lies so that you can um, offer yourself as a topic expert and under appropriate situations. So maybe chamber events or if something happens in the global or national media that you're an expert at that topic that you can you know, put that out there to people like, this is my understanding of that situation, or this is how we do business here compared to how they do business there, things of that nature. So you, it, it's something you have to work at every day. So if you become very familiar with your core message and your level of expertise, then you can really project that out. So you can use social media as an excellent example of how you can really slowly build your core message so that people understand um, what your business does and why your business does it. Because I think that's a really important part of PR is not just telling people what you do, but why you do it, because that's where they get that emotional connection to you. So that's what we try to do at PennDOT is create um, a better, more rounded image for ourselves. Now, everyone knows we work on roads, but maybe everyone doesn't stop to think about why do we work on roads? And that's because we care about our communities and our and the businesses in our communities and we want to provide that safe transportation opportunities. So you can also do that for your business. Like make sure that people understand why you do what you do. Um, I was, oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. I wanted to add one more thing, which is partnerships are another excellent way to really go the extra mile with your PR. So if there are other agencies, organizations, or businesses that have a common theme, at least in one area of their core messaging to yours, like we care about our community, then you know figure out ways to do things together and get more mileage out of your PR so they can tell people about what you do and you can tell people about what they do. So that can be as big as actually hosting an event together or as small as simply just like sharing each other's posts on on social media and things of that nature. Yeah, great advice. I, you know, I hadn't really thought about this series as PR, but but there's no question that when mm -hmm. we started this, that that was what this was intended to be. We're, we aren't advertising, we're not sponsored, we're really looking for uh, local experts. And I know you worked in the newspaper business. We all want to be on the front page. We all want to be included in the newspaper, but much like our newsletter, what we're looking for is businesses that can talk about who they are, like you said, and what they're, what they're really good at. So um, I, I think we can just continue to, to help our members learn how, how to get to those core messages. Do you have any examples of when you've seen PR done really, really well or really, really wrong? <laughs> don't want to put you on the spot too much. <laughs> yes. I, I, you asked me that last week and I've been thinking about it a lot. It's a hard thing to say PR done wrong because a lot of people believe that any PR is good PR. If people are talking yeah. about you, that's a good thing. 
But I think there's probably some occasions where that people talking about you turns into a bad thing and maybe destroys your, like your the reputation. So I thought about that for a long time. I was like a, a business or someone who just totally destroyed their reputation through really bad PR. And the only person I could come up with was Charlie Sheen. I don't know how many people remember him, but he had a total breakdown in 2011. So he, took his image, which was he was on a family television show and he really kind of flushed it down the toilet through really bad PR. And he was doing most of it himself. So he was doing interviews where he's at, he would act erratically and he was unapologetic. So um, I haven't seen him in anything in a long time. I'm assuming that he's kind of fallen off the, off the well, you know, radar. And, and that's what bad PR can do. Um, good PR can save you from bad PR. So things go wrong and you figure out how to fix it and you get out there and you fix it in a way that may take a long time to re to restore your reputation, but you're able to do it because you put in the time and you realize that it comes down to every little interaction that you have. Yeah, um, you know, I Jill, I almost feel like, um, you know, the, the worst thing that PR, not the worst, the worst thing is it can take you off the radar completely. But the one thing it can do is it can really eat up your time. You know, we've all, you know, done, miscommunicated something and then we didn't you know maybe we didn't mean to or maybe we did and then realized it was the wrong thing to do but it certainly can take a ton of time yes you know and if I would you agree are, with that so. <laughs> yeah. I can give a, a few examples um, of good versus bad so we had a uh, situation about a year and a half ago at PennDOT where we for safety reasons had to um, remove some trees from an area along the interstate. This is not a new process for us. We have done it in the past and we didn't really announce it in a grand you know, fashion where we drew a lot of attention to it because to us it felt like a normal thing, uh, part of our process. Uh, but to the drivers who went by that area all the time, it was a shock to their system and I, spent countless hours on the phone with people, um, both media and just customers in general, who were extremely upset that we had cut down the trees. So in, in that instance, we, it started out as bad PR, turned into good PR in the end because we were able then to explain ourselves. Again, our core messaging was safety and the reason we cut down those trees is so people would stop hitting them with their cars because we had a high rate of that happening in that area. So we were able to explain, you know, we have to remove them so people stop hitting them. Safety is in the forefront of everything we do. That's one of our main core messages. But in the meantime, it was very, it was very ugly for a few weeks. So I would say, in, in my experience, that was probably the toughest PR situation that I had to deal with because people were very, very emotional. It wasn't just a difference of opinion. It was a difference of emotion. Um, yeah. And so I took that experience. I try to think of other times when people become very emotional and that and pen dot land would be when we say the R word, which is roundabout. So people get extremely emotional when we start talking about roundabouts there. There's a lot of trepidation. Few people feel like they're not going to be able to do it. And it's a new experience and we all are creatures of habit. So we hate change. So in light of other things that had happened and understanding that, people get upset about it when we build a very large roundabout in the Meadville area, the biggest one we have in our region, we decided to be extremely proactive. So we didn't wait for people to call us and be upset that they couldn't figure out how to drive through it. We were proactive and we went out and did a very large PR campaign where we ended up speaking with thousands of people, um, most of them one-on-one. -on -one. And you know, we talked about what are your worries where do you need to go when you go through the roundabout? And we really broke it down to their level because that's what they needed to hear. And, and when we had those conversations, we are always able to go back to our core message, which is we built this roundabout because it's gonna be safer, it's gonna be more efficient because they move more traffic, and it's the right thing to do for the tax dollars because in the end, they're, you know, they're less expensive to maintain than a signalized intersection. So our core message always below the surface there and always ready to, you know, be inputted as appropriate in every single one of those conversations. Yeah, that's and so what, what that translates to me a lot of that is sometimes bad PR is when you do no PR. 
So yes. um, getting mm -hmm. out in front of the message is critical. So what is a business who is not experienced in writing press releases and what we think of as traditional PR? You know, are, are there tools available? What are they to do? Do you, ha do you have any advice about, you know, where they would get started if they're like, okay, I want to set, I want to set this road straight. <laughs> um, I would, first of all, press releases are a wonderful way to make sure that people understand what you're doing. So even if you can't get them printed in the paper, having the availability of them to be searchable and findable on your website is, is pretty important because you never know when someone's trying to figure out what the heck you're doing. Like why, why does it look like they're tearing down that building or adding on to that building and things like that. I, if you haven't done it before, or if you're looking for a way to do it better, I would say first you need to ask yourself, how often do I think I'm, am I going to be writing press releases? If it's going to be more like one-off kind of situations where you might have one, maybe two a year, then you might want to hire somebody to kind of help you out because it would, could become very time consuming and especially because every time might be like the first time. If you think it's something you're going to do on a regular basis, um, I would first say to sit down and main and develop a format in which you're going to do them so that every time you send out a press release, it looks very similar in style to the one you did before because um, that just helps predictability and helps people understand what you're trying to say. Um, I would also recommend having a place on your website specifically for them so that people can find them more easily. So you can have um, what some people would call like a newsroom or a media center or something of that nature where you put those very formal press releases. Um, there's a lot of tools out there on the internet with how to write a press release. I would say you want them to be very brief and succinct. You want to get to the point, um, but without being too technical, you want to answer the five W's and the H, which the who, what, when, where, and why, and how. And you also want to make sure that they're as print ready as possible. So, you know, make them reflect what you've seen in your local media or in your, the newsletter, wherever you're attempting to get them printed. Try to have them ready in that style. Because um, the more they are in that style, the greater the chance that somebody will pick them up and say, this is practically usable how it's been sent we'll just copy and paste it and put it in there so right and um, i and uh, i changed the slide here real quick because we do we will list resources and i think we can probably um add to our our link of this recording on our website you know a few examples of some good templates and some good starter yeah. places we've been lucky enough to work with jill in the past and she's she's provided us with some great examples of that and I, i'm sure you would agree that um it, you make make sure you thoroughly have your contact information included in all those yes. press releases that can be your little and, and proofread yes yeah. <laughs> i think it's always if you're going to handle it yourself don't do it alone so make sure that at least one other person that you trust um has proofread it because and i know this from experience i am constantly leaving out little tiny words like a's and it's and ifs because I know what it's supposed to say and the way I read, I read right past those small words. So um, I could easily send out a press release with those types of typos and not even realize it, of course, until right after I hit send and then I become extremely aware of it. So avoid that um, feeling of frustration by making sure that you have at least one person press release, read your press release before you send it out, especially if you're gonna have um, quotes in there because that's their, your opportunity to get feedback about what do other people think about the way you wrote your quote to make sure you're projecting that core message? I can tell you as uh, publishers and we here at the chamber, we are definitely publishers. We are continually handling other people's information that they send us um, in the newsletter, through social media posts. You know, occasionally someone's asking us for some help with a, you know, some kind of a flyer or something like that. We would love it if we got a message in a few different ways. You know, we love it to, if we would get a short version, a long version, and a social media version. You know, I don't know mm -hmm. if there's a whole list of those, but uh, occasionally we have a small space to fill in the newsletter and we'd love, to, you know, even if we have to let it spill over to our blog. Um, every once in a while, we've got an extra page. So we may be able to include a longer article, but if you've only given us one or the other, Mm -hmm. then it you you may not fit either space. So yes. it's really nice when we get a short version and a long version. 
Um, I'm not sure that we're great at doing that to to the newspaper and the other people we send to, but even the even the radio version, you know, the, the talking version, if we know, if you send us something that's a page and a half long, and then we have the opportunity to share that information with someone, we need to know how to talk about it in a few sentences. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, really crafting that in those ways is helpful. Yes. And I, from my experience working with uh, community organizations, I would say the wider uh, grouping of people who you're sending the press release to, the more it is important to do, to do that, that you were just describing there, because you, all newspapers have their own style and their own way of using certain things. So if you can give some a short version and some a long version, that makes your press release um, more usable and, and they'll pay more attention to it. And again, it comes back to that formatting because then they recognize that you've done that. If you continue to do that, then when they see you pop into their inbox, they know what to expect from you and um, they'll know right away if they think they're going to use it or not. I think it's also important when you do press releases that you make sure you explain why you think they should use it right there in, in the beginning. So yeah. if it's because you have something important or timely happening in your organization or your business, then you need to make sure it's right there in the first sentence or two. If it's because you're an expert in something and you just wanna let people know, then you know you need to make sure you explain that. Never assume that people just understand why they should care. You always need to make sure that you explain to them. Yeah, I, I think one of the things we found that works well with us when we're working with local media, but it also works if our members let us know is we have members that send us press releases almost every month, you know, especially if they have a, um, if, if they have someone assigned to that. And we love that because it's just always content sitting there waiting for us. But what we try to tell them is if something is more important, let us know because if, you know, we can't publish the same members um, information every month. We have 450 members, so there's not room for everyone. But we certainly want to know when it is something that is time sensitive or, you know, critical because of something going on. So uh, we, we tried to do that. I'll pick up the phone and call, you know, call the Derek if there's something that's like, oh, can I, is there, is there a chance I can guarantee that this mm -hmm. is in in the next couple of days? Or if I send it next Tuesday, can I, you know, plan on it by the end of the week? So don't be afraid to talk with your local media. And I'm going to put a quick plug in here before we go towards our, you know, our last question. Um, but yesterday we had a, a great day with graduation and projects with our leadership team and, and a large part of, well, their projects were all based around communication and better communication. How do we get word out about things that are going on? How do we help businesses what they, with what they need to know? And how do we reach out to our youth to make sure they know? And we'll be sharing much of the, that project generation, but one of the, pro, one of the teams um, really created a list of all the different kind of organizations and businesses that are charged with sharing information. So it's a great directory that we'll be sharing so that when you get your press releases ready, you could go right through that list and make sure that they're submitted to every one of them. And, and equally, if you're looking for information, those are, that's a great list of places to seek. So I'm excited to, to share that soon with, with everyone as a, as a resource that you can use. Um, so as we he head towards the end here, I'm gonna um, share Jill's contact information. I know she's happy to talk with any of you. Uh, she's been a presenter in our leadership program and um, is someone that I just love reaching out to both from a community and friend standpoint, and, but professionally, you know, really is on top of her game, plays a really important role. And so Jill and I talked yesterday uh, about this. You know, the top priority right now for all of us should be maintaining a positive image and reputation for our businesses and our organizations. It's tough where we are, we are a country divided over many, many things. So really maintaining that reputation is important. Um, but besides maintaining the reputation of our own organization, you know, what we do impacts our community image. And what goes on in our community reflects on our organization. So, uh, you know, I'd like to talk just a little bit about how important it is for businesses and organizations to, to think about projecting a positive image and, and how that supports the greater community. And, and what we're trying to accomplish as a region. I'll, I'll let you weigh in on that, Jill. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it a little bit <laughs> yeah. I think that partnerships are an extremely important part of PR. I don't really know how, especially in a small community, um, and I even in a smaller region like Northwestern Pennsylvania, I don't know how you can really have good PR without partnerships because um, everybody knows everybody. 
I think that it's really important um, when you set out to create those partnerships that you, you know, you take your time in the sense that you make sure that you know which businesses you're aligning yourself with because you certainly don't want one business bringing down the whole group. So you be intentional, but also be very open to the idea that non-traditional partnerships can exist. Um, PennDOT, we are always looking for ways to partner with the community, but we don't have the resources to do it at a level in which most people would want to in the sense that we reopen a bridge and we, you know, we would love to do a ribbon cutting ceremony, but we're not um, permitted to, to spend money on certain things like cookies and refreshments and, and, and other things like that. So partnerships become an extremely important part of that for us. If we can find a chamber or a business organization, uh, business group, or just businesses around um, the bridge or something of that nature who would, you know, partner with us to really create that community feel, then it becomes a real celebration instead of a pat on the back just for us. So I think that that translates into, you know, all aspects of, of, you know, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. It's some, it's a little difficult because my, my situation is so much different than a lot of other businesses. But I think that people really appreciate when they see groups coming together and acknowledging each other's role in things. Yeah, I think so. Making things successful. And, yeah, and that's I, the type of thing that somebody, that people gravitate towards. Yeah. And it's also um, what really helps us move the message forward in a, in a louder format. So when we are able to, when PennDOT's able to partner with the community and we can both say, look at this wonderful thing that we were able to create together. Again, I'll go back to the roundabouts. So when we build those, we let the community decide what's in the middle. And um, some communities have literally told us to put rocks in the middle. That's all they want, just rock they're easier to maintain where other communities are like let's create this beautiful gateway together and and we're like yes let's do that because we want what we do to increase the value of the community as well and so I think that translates out into all of all these different groups I'm not sure where everyone is from that's on the call today but every time you can get together and say how do we make this better like so I could do it alone and you could do it alone or we could do it together and make it even greater and yeah, I, I agree completely, Jill. Um, you know, I, I mentioned to Jill yesterday, you know, we've all picked up the paper, we've driven by and seen, seen a sign, um, you know, just one thing that was posted or, or presented in the community, and it, it, it kind of makes us cringe and reflect on, you know, uh, how, how would an outsider, maybe a visitor, perceive our community based on if they read or see one piece of communication that is really not done well, maybe even just not, not well well written um, mm -hmm. and, and conversely you know how do we feel when we read something that someone that makes us really proud you know even if it's not us we kind of own it as as part of that greater community so I think it, there really is a charge for us all to do better certainly around COVID and what we're dealing with now but it's something that we can maybe take the time and take into the future and remember that we we all impact each other um, in in how we're communicating uh, so we are on 9.32. We've got a half an hour in. So Jill, you've answered a lot of questions for us. Again, we'll post some resources. And, and I appreciate, again, that everyone continues to join us. Um, uh, we'll have another session next Tuesday. We're going to be talking about nonprofits. And we're going to be talking about uh, you know, how important they are to the community, what COVID has been like for them, and, and why it's so important for us to understand their role in our community and why Nonprofits are important to our businesses. You know, it, it may be easy to, to um, tr kind of try to divide them out as a different group, uh, but they're critical to our employees, to the future of our entire community. So we'll be talking uh, with Trenton Mullen, will be our guest that day, next Tuesday. And then we'll begin planning forward for every Tuesday. These calls are free. They are recorded and available to look at after. We hope that you will um, share with people that you think need to hear what we've talked about. So have a great day. Uh, hopefully it's, 